Today, I'm giving you some valuable tips to help you learn watercolor faster. Things that you can start to implement today that will help you improve quickly. The first tip is remove barriers to your painting. When I was first learning how to paint, I was working a full-time job, I was a new parent, and I just didn't have a lot of time. So something that would have really helped me out is if I would have prepared the day before. So when I finally had some time to sit down and paint, everything was already planned out. I use larger sheets of paper and I tear them down to size before I paint. Get that done beforehand. Fill up your water. Have your brushes laid out and ready to go. If you tape your paper down, tape it down the night before. Have your palette cleaned and ready to go. Make sure that your palette is full of paint. It's the same thing with exercising or practicing anything else. You're more likely to get moving if these little things are already taken care of. Tip number two plays right into this. Pick out your reference the day before. I feel some motivation to paint. I have some time and I sit there just scrolling, just trying to find that right picture to paint. What ends up happening is you scroll, 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 and you've wasted your painting time, and you just kind of lose that spark. You lose that interest and that drive. If you have a way to organize your photos on your phone, create an album specifically for reference photos. So you can drag and drop those photos that you're excited about that you want to get back to. This can really speed things up when you're making that decision. Number three, you may have heard me say this before, but it is the number one way to improve more quickly, and that is to paint small and paint often. It can be very tempting to paint in a large size, but if you really want to improve, paint small and paint often. Repetition in watercolor is maybe more important than any other medium because timing is so crucial. You know, we only have a certain amount of time before that paper is dry and you can get certain effects. And so practicing our timing is really important. Not to mention that if you are painting smaller, you are getting more practice in your drawing and your composing and your color mixing and your progress really speeds up if you're painting small and often. Number four, focus on consistency rather than results. Try to not get too hung up in whether your painting is good or bad. Instead, are you painting as often as you can? Are you painting when you might not even feel like it? Getting started will make that spark, will bring about that excitement, but you might not feel it right away. Learning can be a bit of a roller coaster too, so you might get on a stretch where you're really liking what you're doing and then you might sink down and be discouraged for a while. But if you keep showing up, no matter the output, no matter how you're feeling about it, you will see improvement in your painting. Number five, practice between paintings. We often think that the only way to get better at painting is to paint actual complete paintings. What we need to be doing is practicing areas that we struggle in. If you want to improve in painting skies, set aside 10 minutes a day and just practice skies. That's one of the beautiful things about watercolor. It does not take long to practice these things. It is a quick medium. If you want to improve in figures, if you want to improve in drawing, if you need to work on color mixing, all of these things can be practiced. If you wait until you need this particular skill in a painting, chances are you'll be very disappointed with how that turns out. Another thing I'll add on to this is have a piece of scrap paper beside you while you are painting. This will help you practice your brush mark before you add it onto your painting. Watercolor, as you know, can be pretty unforgiving. What you put on the paper is kind of what you are stuck with. And so if you take the time to practice the mark before you make it, you will ensure that you are making the correct mark when the time comes. Number six, use a calendar. This goes back to valuing consistency. The idea here is very simple. You hang up a calendar and every time you do something to get better as a painter, you mark on the calendar. And then at the end of the month, you can take a look at that calendar. You can see all the times that you decided to show up and paint and improve. This is a great way to value consistency and it's a visual representation. That calendar is gonna show you every time that you showed up and you chose to paint. And number seven is don't stop. There are gonna be ups and downs in your learning. You might bump into a difficult time in your painting where you feel like you plateau. If you don't stop painting, if you stick with it, you will make progress over time. Keep some of your old paintings around because as you progress, you will want to compare your old paintings with your newer paintings. And I like to show students this too, because it's tempting to think that people that know how to paint have always known how to paint. Well, here is one of my very first paintings 
And here is one of my more recent paintings. So everyone is starting at the same place. If you're just getting started, don't be discouraged. So keep painting, keep moving forward. And I'm hopeful that these seven tips that I've shared with you today will help you move along even quicker. Have you ever been really excited about a painting and you get all set up, you find that right reference that you're excited about, and then it's time to go and you feel lost? You ever had that experience? You just are having a hard time finding consistency. Some of your paintings turn out, some of your paintings don't turn out, and you're not really sure why. Well, I have a free resource that I wanna to give to you today that can help exactly with these problems. My five steps to plan a successful watercolor painting. I walk you through the crucial planning phase of your painting that will help you understand what you're going to paint first, second, and third. The planning is really so important, especially in watercolor. This medium is harder to correct. It's so immediate. So having that plan is very important. I send you a PDF that you can download. And the great thing about this is you can have it on your phone, you could print it out, and you can take a look at these crucial planning steps before you start each painting to ensure that you're thinking through these important things as you get started. You can download this right now before you start your next painting. All you have to do is follow this link here and download my five-step guide to planning a successful watercolor painting.